Okay, so our next thing that we're going to run talk about is going to be the um, the Toy Box TV Live this week um, or last Friday. Um, ooh, what a show that was! Yeah, that was awesome. It was it was cool. Um, I mean, they they got to demo this time around the Rise Against um, Empire playset, which was awesome. Mm. Um, tapped into a bunch of cool things coming on. Uh, they showed the eight new power discs, um, but um, I don't know. I mean, what did you think? How did you feel about the whole thing? I think just in general, they I felt the show was a lot more structured. It was a bit shorter. I mean, when there was a couple of delays in getting on, you know, they kind of got rid of the toy box side of things from what um, the two point zero, which I think a lot of people were just it wasn't wasn't working the way they were doing it. They they kind of just, and the amount of time they were just playing that in that Star Wars playset, you know, they and messing about doing the um, the attack attacks and just you know and fighting with each other. It just it was a very informal um, sort of uh, demo, but it was very. I think it was just very informative. You know, they, JV was uh, freaking out when he kept seeing the debug mode coming up on the screen. Not, yeah. that, I, not that I would have had a bit of understood any of what was coming up. But I think it was it was just the fact that they were in there and they were having fun and messing about in there and and interacting with the Twitch viewers. I think this it was a really good, enjoyable show. Um and I think that's what they need to do, this that thing of tighten it up a bit, but allow that that freedom, you know, they obviously had to they made the announcement with those the power discs, but they you know, they got in there and just played. And I think that's what what is gonna sell this game this summer is them doing these kind of little things. I yeah. think if you're watching it on Twitch, you're probably already sold anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, checking, yeah. You want to you... the... I was going to say, yeah. if, if you want me to go through the recap. Yeah, um... you go through the recap since you wrote it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true, I did write it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just get to watch that one. It's like, oh yeah, Abe's got that one covered. I'll leave that one. <laughs> Uh, well, they started off the whole thing with uh, JV asking Allison about uh, her week, and she did bring up the fact that she's been working on the top secret community event coming up. Um, and they did, you know, JV asked her questions, kind of to give us some some spoilers. But it looks like it's an event happening at the end of summer, which mm-hmm. is close to D twenty three. But he said community, so it also could mean the summit. So who knows? Yeah. Uh, and also, JV was working on some top secret. He said the words "future infinity," so mm. they might be already. Of course, they might be. Of course, that, they are. I, I, I would know stuff for sure. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, so they also mentioned that they were going to show us new Paradise. Sean Patton was going to mm-hmm. demo it. Yada yada yada. Um, right now, at the stage that they're in, currently, Avalanche is working on killing tons of bugs in the game. So that's that's a great. Um, that's a great progress report for all of us who, you know, got to experience all that during 2.0. So hopefully it's going to be a lot better this time around. This, this just keeps saying to me that this game is that much closer to launch. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, this was kind of cool, um, which I already knew a little earlier, but it looks like E3 opened up to the public this year. But the only way you can come in as a fan, you have to be invited by a developer. And looks like Allison has about 200 fan tickets to give away. So that right. looks kind of interesting. Uh, who knows how they're going to roll that out, but that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And obviously they're finishing up the, the the touches for E3, which is coming up not so far away from here. Uh, but anyways, they got into the demo. And uh, basically looks some cool stuff that we got to see. Um, you know, first of all, they showed us the whole uh, how do you take down an at at Mm-hmm. Uh, the ATAT basically. Um, they said that the uh, the way they move, Studio Gobo was actually inspired by the game Shadow of Colossus. I don't know if you actually got to play that in the past. No, um, I never played that. Yeah, it was a very cool game, and it does kind of make you feel like they are like this this huge overpowering being, even though they're just machines here. Yeah, I mean, but, I remember um, playing. Um, I think there was an N sixty four. I think my. I think it might have been Rogue Squadron or something, where you had to whiz around the legs and take them out with the with the, with the um, hook and stuff. So I remember doing that in a video game before. Yeah. So uh, he typed. Uh, he he dived into the three ways to take them down. The first way they showed was obviously taking away the batteries, kind of like all the other other places yeah. we've we've had. You know, there's batteries you remove them. These are all supposed to be toys. So yeah. uh, this was kind of cool. He he had Luke Skywalker banging on the the legs, and then it drops armor. You climb it with the bars that it, it uh, reveals and you remove the battery. Uh, the second way, which is obviously the traditional way, which everybody knows from the movie and from other games, is like you said, taken down with the uh, the, the tow cable. 
Um, you can just wrap around it, which is cool. And then the third one, which I thought was freaking awesome, um, is you can actually somehow figure out how to land on top of the at at and um, basically eject the pilot. And there's the, it, it reveals this remote that you can actually not only control it from the top, but you can actually take it off, get off of the uh, ATAT, and 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 control it from there. Um, Do you know what the the one thing that jumped out to me from this is how they've gone back to being toys. They really kind of pushed it back. They, I think, with Marvel, they went quite. They were quite more. A lot of the times, they looked like they were just. It was just a video game. They've, re, you know, like there, you can see the screws. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's definitely more that their toys detail in, in, in this round. I mean, 2.0 did have it, but like you said, it wasn't as obvious as it is here, which is awesome. I mm-hmm. agree with you there. Um, one thing that they did dive into, which is really cool about the uh, ATATs, obviously the original ATATs, uh, especially in the movie and the way they were designed at Lucasfilm, they never were intended to turn. So they're always going straight. Mm-hmm. And Studio Gobo developed this unique uh, procedural generation physics tool that basically lets it interact with its surrounding, mm-hmm. the terrain, the way you actually put the tow cable on it. So it's actually going to, basically depending on, on where it's walking or where you wrap it around, that's how it's going to fall, that's how it's going to explode, that's how it's going to turn around. Really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, they did say that the ATSTs, which are the smaller ones, um, those will be using the same physics tool as well. Um Interesting thing that I saw here, uh, I don't know what you think about this too, but apparently Jar Jar Binks is also in this playset. So I wonder how he's going to, uh, what has what he has to do with the story. I don't know. Um, so let's see what happens with that. Um, and then um, Sean and Matt did talk, uh, I mean, Sean did talk about him and Matt playing the Toybox Speedway, how awesome it is. So looks like we have something cool coming. Yeah. Um, they went Let's through all see. the they went through all the power discs which we've done already. Yeah, they went through all the power discs which we went through earlier today. But um, uh, let's see. There was a couple other things they did. Oh yeah, they there's this cool new um combat mode with the ATATs where you basically it's called the ATAT sumo battle or whatever. So yeah. if you're playing multiplayer, you can actually <laughs> go against each other and and it takes uh points score or whatever and on, on, yeah, on but- who knocks each other down first. Quick note, obviously this is in the playset, but they are trying to work on a way of bringing this in to a toy box of some kind. Of They're not too sure how they're going to do it, because it's almost like a mini adventure, but they can't do it within the toy box. It's going to have to be a little bit more um, restrictive. So it's interesting to see what they're going to try and do with that. I think this yeah. will be very popular online, but at the minute it's just co-op. Yeah, they're trying to figure that out, like you said, as we speak. Although I did remember seeing in uh, one of Tigga's videos on, on Disney Infinity Fans that there is an ad in the toy box, but it looks like it's just a stagnant yes. toy yeah. that you put like scenario. So, yeah, uh, but that looks kind of cool. Yeah, um, I think they said you know Evelos is going to be on. Evelos is going to be on next week's show. He's a um, custom artist that does some great looking Infinity figures. So we'll yeah, on that next week. So yeah. we we mentioned the the different ones. Right now, I'm going to bring up the there was basically an an elephant in the room for the whole show. And it was this poster behind there of this, of this art. And originally it was going to be the artwork for the Game Informer magazine. Now what everyone was jumping straight onto was slap bang here in the middle of the fire, this Boba Fett. And basically I think all show, everyone was going, well, the Boba Fett's in the background. And eventually um, JV did actually sort of turn around and sort of shown, show, explain what the poster was. Didn't specifically um, say anything about Boba Fett. But um, I think he's that's looking. It does look very promising, doesn't it? Yeah, Roger. You know what's funny? This is the first time I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> All the way through the chat, everyone's going with this Boba Fett. We can see Boba Fett. We can see Boba Fett in the background. You know what? I was so focused writing this article that I'm taking notes and doing. Yeah. I wasn't even. I wasn't even paying attention. So see, wow. that was the thing because I, <laughs> I was. I was in the chat just yapping to everyone and watching the show. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a real kind of thing you can really see. Um, I'm trying to see if I can bring that up any closer. Here we go with a bit, so you can see it better. So there you can see there is Boba Fett. Yeah, you click it, click it. So zoom in even more if you can. <laughs> there we go. <Wow. laughs> yeah, I, I can't believe I missed it the whole time. I missed it on the chat and I missed it on the artwork. There you but go. See, but you see that? I mean, it is really hard to um, kind of be there going, mm hmm. <laughs> so yes, wow. um, I and also it looks identical. To iron, iron a tardy slip here. <laughs> you know, it's, it looks pretty identical to that mode there. 
Well, look, this is it makes sense. I mean, it, you got to think about this. Um, in in the prequel characters, I mean, uh, in the prequel characters that they've announced, y- you had villains throughout 1.0 and 2.0 being released later on. The yeah, villain makes you can, total you sense. Can, yeah, you can think of is obviously Darth Maul, but you also think of General Grievous. Well, what about on the rise? You have Darth Vader already, but who is another villain technically? Boba mm-hmm. is. So that makes a lot of sense. Wow, I just noticed that. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> um, um, there was a few more things too. Um, oh yeah, there was one thing that was um, brought up. They are working with a number of YouTube video makers. Um, right. Basically, PewDiePie, Evan Tube, Swampy Cat, and Captain Spark was the. Basically, they are going after the big gaming YouTubers. Um, we're probably just a few subscribers short of that category ourselves. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're all, thanks to you, all of you guys. Thank you so yes, much, by the way. Yes, but yeah, all, this is, all the subscribers help. But I mean, these guys are in like an entirely different, and you know, it makes complete sense to go out. And I know um, they already play the game. You know, Captain Sparkles and PewDiePie yeah. and Evan Jib have already. I'm not too sure about Stampy because he's more of a Minecraft guy. But it makes sense for gamers. You know, these guys have got much more a bigger audience, especially younger audience, than. Um, not that PewDiePie is really that sort of ch- child friendly, but you know, he's there's a, a real audience to go after. And I think some people don't maybe take that seriously. To me, you know, you know, I know that PewDiePie played some toy boxes, including one of mine, and it was viewed by millions and millions of people. More probably more people maybe sort would see a video on PewDiePie than they would do on Game Informer. I'm being completely honest with that. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers. Um yeah. And uh, speaking of videos that were viewed, they also gave me a shout out for one of my videos. <laughs> All right, you're mad, you're mad, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I created a parody video of JV uh, in an episode of Mad Men. In, uh, I, I titled it Mad Men Infinity. So if you want to go see it on YouTube, go ahead and look it up. But uh, I, it was funny. It was, it was silly. It was a lot of yeah. fun. So. Anything else you want to add on that Toy Box TV live before we move on to the Super uh, Chargers? Oh, other than that, dude, I'm I'm stoked. I, I just saw Boba for the first time. So, yes. yeah, no, I mean, I think with that Toy Box TV, it's really kind of it's a great little show to watch. Um, it's really informative, very sort of friendly. Also, the chat is good because you've usually got I'm um, a lot of sort of the real diehard fans in there. You know, you've got Rob from Coin TV, Everloss is in there. You've got um, usually got like Pirate Steven, uh, Model Train Man was in there. Um, oh, there's a whole load of different um, sort of well-known sort of Disney Infinity fans and stuff in there. So it's always a good thing to check out. Um, and you usually find us two in there as well. Yeah, it looks like I miss things, though, because I multitask there. <laughs> yeah, but then, that's fine. So it's, then I, could, I could pick it up. So there we go. That's cool. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Moving right. on. Moving on. Okay. 